cut. A portion of this video is sponsored by Blinkist, an educational book summarizing service. So I've seen the comments, I know y'all been asking for this one. Sword that turns into a belt. Actually, belt that turns into a sword. That sounds way cooler for some reason. But yeah, that's what we're gonna make today. So I've seen this idea before in The Spy Next Door with Jackie Chan. He's got a sword belt that he uses for a few scenes in the movie. But I mean, there's probably other movies that have stuff like this too. Whatever you know it from, we're gonna try and make it. All I ask though is that you head down to the comments real quick, drop a little idea for what I should build next. Cause that's how this series works. Like I really do try and read all the comments I can. But if you see any cool ideas already down there, hit it with a thumbs up so I know it's popular. And maybe, you know, like and subscribe if you do end up liking this. All right, so in the movies, it looks like the device is more of a baton almost. Like it doesn't look sharp or anything, it just looks like a straight belt. But in my mind, like if I'm gonna make a sword, it needs to be sharp, like it needs to, be, we need to be able to cut stuff. So that is a priority with this one. So the obvious issue is that swords are stiff, belts are not. Belts don't really work as swords. Do it, you won't. And swords don't work as belts. So we need to build a mechanism that can do both. So I gave this some thought and I was thinking maybe some sort of chain design, uh, cause they bend one way, but not the other. But the issue is still like, how do we stop it from bending at all when it's in sword form? But if you think about it, a belt really only needs to bend in one direction. So it bends one way around your waist, but once it gets to the 90 degrees in the other direction, doesn't need to bend anymore. So maybe we make something like that, where it bends one way, but stops at the 90 degrees. So I hopped on SolidWorks and modeled some sort of like chain link pieces that have hinges between them, but also a piece that stops it from bending past the straight. Also got some mini neodymium magnets that should help keep the sword straight when it's in the extended position. So I added some space for those too. Also give this thing at least some sort of cutting power. I added some slots on the side that can fit some pieces of 1 8 inch thick metal that we can sharpen to hopefully make it cut stuff. Honestly, I'm not 100% on this design, but you know, we gotta start somewhere. So I printed a ton of those pieces and got to work assembling everything. Now if there's one word to describe this project, oh my God, it is tedious. I had to cut and sharpen literally 100 pieces of metal for this blade. Then we had to put all the pieces together, put all the magnets in, clean up the 3D print, screw them all together, screw them to the next one, and repeat for what seemed an eternity. But it was looking pretty promising, like it looked really cool. Uh, and I did print these pieces with 100% infill, so uh, it should be at least somewhat strong. Uh, but even still, I'm really worried what's gonna happen if I actually try and hit something with this. But I added a tip and a handle, so now you can just slide it through your belt loop and pull it out whenever you want. playing around with it for a little bit. Although it does look cool, I think we can do better. So it occurred to me that maybe I'm overthinking this whole process. Like maybe we don't need some fancy complicated 3D printed chain link pieces with like magnets and everything. Cause the more complex something is like the higher chance it's gonna break. Essentially we were trying to turn a belt into a sword, but what if we come at it from the other side and try and turn the sword into a belt? Like what if we just start with a piece of metal and try and make it bend? Metal is elastic, it's all sorts of springs. You just gotta make sure to stay within that elasticity range for the specific type of metal. As I was thinking about this, my mind immediately went to like tape measures and those slap on bracelets that form to your wrist. So their geometry allows them to curl up, but also maintain like a rigid straight form to some extent. Again though, the problem is strength. Like tape measures aren't very strong. Like, like, it's pretty easy to get them to bend. So we're gonna have to make our own design that's much stronger if we're gonna have any chance of cutting stuff. Actually, funny enough though, a while back, I got some of this spring metal. I think it's actually called like blue tempered sheet steel, but it's pretty cool, very elastic, and also very, very hard. So if we cut a few strips of it, put a little bend in the middle, put a couple strips together, we should end up with a sword that's stiff enough to cut stuff but also bend into a belt. It's gonna be a sweet spot, I think, where we'll still have enough bend to wrap around your waist, but also enough stiffness to make it like a cool sword. So I cut a few strips of it and put a crease in two of them. Like you can see a clear difference between the piece with a crease and the piece without. Um, so if we layer one creased piece on the top, a straight piece in the middle, and then another creased piece on the bottom, we should end up with a nice sword shape that should have a thin enough edge to cut stuff, but also fold into a belt when you put enough pressure on it. Like there's a specific amount of force you need to put on a tape measure to make it bend. Nope, 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 and then it bends and then it snaps back. So we need to find the sweet spot for how much force is required to make our sword bend. Now the trick is actually figuring out how to attach these pieces together. Like we can't use screws because we're trying to keep this thing thin and also we need a little bit more give. Um, so I ended up using some steel wire for this. I ended up drilling holes along each of the ends of the blade or try to drill holes anyway. Like remember when I said this stuff is hard? Yeah, it's really hard. Like it wouldn't even work with this heavy duty drill bit I got that's specifically meant for hard metal. So I ended up taking each layer and using a hammer and nail to just 
bang a hole like one layer at a time. But once all that was done, I was able to thread some wire through each of the holes, kind of just looped it along the length of the blade, which was again, very tedious, but you know, we got it done. Then I 3D printed a little handle, which doesn't actually need to be that flexible because I'm picturing the handle being sort of like the belt buckle. Um, so we drilled some more holes and attached on the handle with some screws. Then I cut the tip into a point, and now we're left with a flexible sword that's pretty sharp too, even without sharpening it. So you can just thread this through your belt loops like straight up and just pull it out when you want the sword. Uh, but to make this a little bit more hidden, I actually went ahead and made a sheath out of some seatbelt material. Basically, we just attached the two pieces together using some steel wire, and we ended up with a nice low profile belt that can hold our sword. Before I test this out though, I wanna show off some of your inventions that you guys made and sent to me. Check them out. So I love doing this segment, guys. I think it's really inspirational. So if you've made anything cool that you're proud of, uh, definitely send it to me on Instagram, at video or email it. Like building stuff is cool, but it's even cooler when I get like emails and comments like this. Like saying that you guys are getting creative as a result of these videos. Like I used to be the kid watching these videos, you know, tearing all my parents' stuff apart for parts. So it's really awesome that I can do that now and maybe be that guy for someone else. All right, but let's see what this thing can really do. Get cutting. All right, we're gonna do a draw and slice all in one pick. Let's go, did I get it? I got it. Let's try a soda bottle. Oh, I've done this too many times that I know it's gonna happen. <laughs> so for the most part, I'm pretty happy with this. Obviously it is bending a little bit, but it's still making it clean through the fruit. Like this thing could definitely do some damage, but for anything harder than like a soda bottle, we're probably gonna need another design. Cause if we try and stiffen this up at all and make it not bend, it's not gonna be able to bend around our waist. I mean, to be fair, we didn't actually sharpen this thing cause didn't wanna actually make this like a real weapon. But in theory, you know, we could do that too. So that's cool and all, but of course this video would not be complete without an over the top montage showing this thing off. Enjoy. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Why are you following me? Doesn't matter, I got you now. You have no weapon, what are you gonna do, kiss me? No, we could. <laughs> We're not doing that. I got this. My name is Jake Laser. You killed my father. Your parents are dying. We'll see about that. Chosen one! You seem like a decent man. It's gonna be a shame for me to kill you. You seem like a decent man. Shame for me to die. There's something I have to tell you. I'm wow. not left handed. There's something I have to tell you. Neither am I. <laughs> And so, with the power of the sword belt, the brave YouTuber was able to fend off the Elder Bald for now. 
So I hope you guys like this one, and I also want to thank Blinkist for sponsoring this video. So as you guys know, I have to do a fair amount of research for most of these projects. So while books are great, they do take a lot of time. And you know, we're trying to turn out these videos as fast as possible. So that's where Blinkist comes in handy. Like they give summaries from thousands of nonfiction books and turn them into 10 to 20 minute segments. Perfect for those short 20, 20 attention spans. So I mean, you could basically read a book in the time it takes you to watch a YouTube video. So think about that. Also, they got audio too, so you don't even need to read them. So you can just have a book on in the background while you're like in the car or doing some other tedious stuff. Like it's perfect for this project I did, just you know, toss a book on in the background, learn some stuff, two birds with one stone. Like this book on AI and what jobs will look like in the future is actually really interesting. So the first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash JLazerVideo will get free unlimited access for a week and then a full membership for 25% off. And of course you can cancel anytime if you don't like it. So that's it for this one guys. Once again, drop your comments down below, like and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.